In this video, we're talking about the final stage of our major multi-day severe weather outbreak. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a moderate risk for severe weather in the Carolinas with a 15% chance of significant tornadoes. And then we have to talk about the future as it looks like our active spring pattern has only just begun. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Before we start with this video, once again, I want to thank everybody who tuned in to the live stream yesterday. We had over 180,000 people tune in and we got vital information out to people who otherwise wouldn't have got it. According to the National Weather Service, there were 24 official tornado reports yesterday and we tracked them all live. Additionally, we gained over 5,000 new subscribers to the channel and I couldn't be more grateful. Welcome here and buckle up because we have a lot more bad weather to track. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America and the western half is doing pretty good, but over here on the east, uh, we're really active right now. In fact, we gotta go straight down here to uh, southern Alabama, southwestern Georgia and the panhandle of Florida as we've got a tornado watch in effect right now as I'm making this video. Now, obviously, by the time this video goes up, a lot of this convection will have moved to the east. But as of right now, we're talking about severe thunderstorm warnings all the way through southern Georgia, uh, occasional tornado warnings coming out of here too. And then eventually, once this organized squall line gets into South Carolina, near Columbia, and then into North Carolina, near Fayetteville, once it gets over here, we're expecting these storms to really start to ramp up. That's why we have that moderate risk for severe weather there uh, outlined in red, Long Beach, Myrtle Beach, uh, Lumberton, Jacksonville, all you places in the Carolinas, you are under a moderate risk for severe weather, which is four out of five. So we're going to watch these storms closely as they head towards the coast. Now up here in the Northeast, we're just talking about some rain. Okay. And eventually that's going to turn into cold rain and maybe a little bit of snow on the backside. And in fact, speaking of snow right here around Springfield, Missouri, where we had multiple tornado warnings yesterday, uh, we are now talking about moderate to heavy snow showers moving in on the backside of this low pressure system, which has just caused so much problem and it's not done yet. Let's check it out on the weather models. All right. This is the high resolution rapid refresh model. And this is what the radar could look like as we go into the future. If you want to keep up with the time and Eastern Standard Time, it's going to be displayed above my head. Here we go around 11 a.m. When this video goes up, our squall line of strong to severe thunderstorms with embedded tornadoes is going to be working through Georgia, uh, Eastern Tennessee, all the way down into uh, the Tallahassee region there, just east of Tallahassee. Now, at this point, we're still going to have tornado watches. We're going to have a marginal tornado threat, but the main threat here is going to be straight line damaging winds, okay? The tornado threat really doesn't ramp up again until it gets over here in this area. Here we are at 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m. 2 p.m. is when it starts to get a little bit more uh, concerning because we are going to have uh, the heating of the day. The sun's going to come out here for a lot of people in uh, North Carolina and northern parts of South Carolina, and that's going to make the atmosphere really unstable, okay? And when this squall line and this dry line and this cold front gets to that unstable air, it's going to force all of that warm, moist air up into the atmosphere, create updrafts, and then we could be talking about rotating supercell thunderstorms that could drop uh, significantly significant tornadoes in this area as we go forward. Now look on the north side here. We've got snow back here in Missouri. Uh, it looks like St. Louis might get a couple flakes today. Uh, and then we've got heavy rain all the way through Illinois and Indiana and Ohio here. We might have some flooding problems out of there. Now another interesting thing to note is we got a low pressure system here. We've got an occlusion front, a cold front, and a warm front, right? And then right here on the triple point in eastern Kentucky, southern Ohio, and western West Virginia, we are going to have the opportunity for some supercell thunderstorms to pop up here that's not associated uh, with our main tornado threat with the squall line down here. Yeah, that's right. We might have some supercell thunderstorms pop up in eastern Kentucky, in southern Ohio, and in western West Virginia, which is, you know, kind of odd this time of year. So we need to watch, especially the, the hail threat and the straight line damaging wind threat and the marginal tornado threat up here in Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia, okay? But once again, the main threat's going to be down here. Let's put this into motion a little bit more, and there we go. You can really see the storm starting to come together here in South Carolina. Uh, they're going to move through the Columbia region region around 4 or 5 p.m. and then they're going to be heading towards Myrtle Beach uh, and the uh, Wilmington areas in North Carolina around 5, 6, and 7 p.m. Uh, we are still going to have strong storms down here in southern Georgia even though you're not in that moderate risk. You're going to have strong severe thunderstorms uh, that are still capable of dropping some significant tornadoes, okay? You need to have a plan in place. You need to be prepared for the possibility of having to take shelter uh, for a tornado warning, okay? If a tornado warning is issued, get into the most interior room of whatever building you're in. If there's an internal Internal bathroom with no external walls or, or a closet with no windows. Make sure you get in there, hunker down. And if you happen to have a helmet, a bicycle helmet, a baseball helmet, a football helmet, anything like that, uh, slap it on too while you're in there uh, because that could literally save your life. And if you have no way of getting warnings today and you have an iPhone or, or any sort of phone, make sure you have emergency alerts turned on. A lot of people turn that off. But if you have that turned on and there's a tornado warning issued for your area, your phone will let you know. 
And then also you can see those storms really firing up here in Eastern Kentucky and West Virginia. I'm, I'm a little concerned about this situation, not only because I live here, but because this is kind of unusual for this time of year. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, people in Eastern Kentucky and Ohio and West Virginia also need to be extremely weather aware today. And then let's put this further into motion. There's those big supercell thunderstorms moving through the Myrtle Beach area. And then eventually we're gonna move all the way out into the coast of North Carolina. And then this is gonna be out to sea by 11 p.m. tonight, okay? So the main threat here is going to occur in the Carolinas from around 2 or 3 p.m all the way through 10 p.m. tonight, okay? That little uh, section right there, that's when you need to be the most weather aware here in the Carolinas. Don't let your guard down in Charlotte though. Don't let your guard down in Blacksburg, Virginia. Don't let your guard down in North Central Florida. Even though that your risk for severe weather is a little bit lower than these guys, I think that the risk is still there and there will be isolated tornado warnings issued for those areas today as well. So let's look at those severe weather parameters. Here's the sick, significant tornado parameter, okay? This is just a composite model that shows the likelihood of uh, significant tornadoes being produced within a certain area and as you can see as we get later on into today we reach very high values sixes and sevens up here in North Carolina maybe even closer to nines and tens there in North Carolina around 6 p.m. today that looks like it's gonna be the maximum uh, event time around 6 p.m. today but you got to remember even if we have you know really high significant tornado parameters if there's no storms here to interact with that then it doesn't matter you can have you can have high significant tornado parameters and there just be no storms to take advantage of it and even though the ingredients are there for a big tornado to happen if there's no storms there's no tornado but uh, I just want to show that just just so you know how serious the situation is it's rare that we get this kind of atmosphere in this area this time of year so I want to make sure everybody takes this seriously and we're also going to have pretty significant uh, convective available potential energy Energy. This is the fuel that storms need. And look, we're near 2,000 joules per kilogram of Cape here in North Carolina later today as those storms move in. So everybody just be weather aware today. And then eventually this is going to move out and our multi-day severe weather threat is over. Everybody put a little clap emote in the chat because it's finally going to be over. And uh, we're going to get a little break here. But before this storm gets out of here, it is going to bring a little bit of snow to New York, North Jersey, Northeast Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. This is just a little bit of snow. And then maybe a shot of snow is going to come through Virginia and the Delmarva Peninsula all the way down into North Carolina possibly uh, on Friday with that last little shot of snow coming through that could drop a quick inch or two of snow before it's all said and done. And then whenever that moves out, hey, we're quiet. We're quiet. It's all good. And the headline instead of tornadoes for the weather story is going to be temperatures. Look at this. We could be talking about low temperatures on Saturday, March 20th across much of the United States being in the 30s and 20s. But don't you worry. That warm area is going to try to come back really quickly you can see that resurgence of warm air there on the 21st on Sunday we were back up in the 50s and 60s for a lot of people here and then you can see that resurgence of warm air really trying to crank it up uh, through Mexico the Gulf of Mexico is starting to warm up that's going to send up some more warm Gulf air here uh, to much of us here on the East Coast but as nice as that is that's actually going to set the stage for more severe weather as we go forward all right let's take a look at that medium range forecast on the euro model so once again as we go through Saturday and Sunday we're pretty quiet except for a little disturbance that goes through the Rocky Mountains here, Idaho, into Wyoming and Montana. You guys are going to see a little bit of snow on Sunday, but for the most part, the East Coast is quiet except for a little bit of rain down here in the Carolinas as a little disturbance uh, tries to throw some moisture back up here as we've got high pressure in place for most of the eastern part of the United States. We're going to have very favorable weather uh, for the Midwest and the Ohio Valley uh, with a big wedge of warm temperatures moving up here all the way into uh, Ontario there bringing once again some nice spring weather to many people who uh, will gladly take it I'm sure uh, but watch this that disturbance in the Rocky Mountains is now moving into the front range of Colorado and we've got a low pressure system forming here on Monday that's right on Monday we could be talking about some more storms forming up here in Kansas and Nebraska and Oklahoma and a full-on low pressure system gets its act together on Tuesday as once again we're talking about maybe a severe weather threat down here in Texas and Oklahoma with a little bit of snow on the top side here uh, near uh, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Nebraska. Watch this, as I put this forward, this right here is gonna try to bring in a little bit of a cold front, and once again, another warm sector in front of it, which could mean uh, some more severe weather down here in Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Up here around the low pressure system in Missouri and Iowa, we're gonna be talking about heavy rain, and then on the backside, heavy snow in South Dakota and Nebraska. Let's move forward into Wednesday. Our storm has turned into a snowstorm here that goes from Nebraska into Minnesota to around the Duluth region, all the way into Ontario, 
Ontario. And then once again, we've just got some uh, heavy rain and storms going on down here in the south. And then that's going to skedaddle. And we have another big system form. And according to the Euro on Friday of next week, uh, and this one looks a little bit more concerning to me as it obviously has a much larger warm sector here. We've got a big trough coming in. Uh, if this was to verify, we could be talking about another significant severe weather outbreak here. Uh, but this is a little far out. So we're going to watch this. We're not going to, you know, sound the alarms just yet. But that does look like it could be a severe weather maker uh, for the southeast on a Friday and Saturday of next week. Uh, with Once again, a little bit of snow on the backside there for Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. And then that's going to get out of here, too. And then we got another storm forming <laughs> on, on March 27th. It's possible uh, that we could be talking about another little Arctic blast trying to come in, bring in some snow to Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico with another warm sector in front of it that could bring some more severe weather. Now, this is one of our favorite things to do on the channel now is look at the instantaneous flash rate so we can really track those storms in depth. Uh, don't pay too close attention to the exact placement of these storms right now because this is medium range forecasting. This is going to change a lot. Uh, uh, but this is the instantaneous flash rate. This is going to show us where storms are possible by showing us where the most dense areas of lightning are going to occur in the future. So here we go. Our first little storm outbreak with that first storm I was talking about on Monday is going to come here in Texas, uh, in central Texas. OK, and then it looks like that's going to head to the east and possibly bring some storms to Louisiana and the southern areas of Mississippi. And then that next storm right after that, that big one that I was talking about, it's showing a broad area of possibly strong to severe thunderstorms in eastern Texas, southeastern. Oklahoma, all through Arkansas, Louisiana, southeastern Missouri, uh, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And then that does move east through the Dixie Alley region and the deep south. And then eventually uh, we get another one, uh, a warm front lifting up here with some more storms all the way back on Saturday, March 27th. So that's what we're dealing with, guys. I mean, it is that time of year, okay? It's time to be weather aware and weather ready every week because we're going to have multiple instances of severe weather as we go forward. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I hope you like this video, guys. If you did, remember, slap a like on it, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn those notifications on. And if you like hearing my weather updates here, I post smaller bits of information all throughout the day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So make sure if you like what I'm doing here, you're not only subscribed here, but you also follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, okay? That way we can stay in touch on every platform, and it'll just be a good time, all right? I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.